Hello there and welcome back to the Hammers United podcast. Gosh, it feels like a long time we have been away, but I am pleased to say we are back. I say we, me, Trevor Tuig, and my delectable co-host, George Barnard. George, how are you today? I'm very good, thank you, mate. How are you? Yeah, I'm fantastic, George. I mean, we'll get into this properly, but at the moment, it is a good time to be a West Ham United fan. I mean, it's up and down, but the minute it's a very, very, very good time, isn't it? It is a very, very good time. It is up and down. However, the ups of um, yeah have are, are certainly winning, shall we say, at the moment. Um, after the week we've had, we've just done a little bit of a reconnoiter, mate, and we haven't we haven't actually done a. Oh, podcast in ages. The last one was going all the way back to the week we beat Fulham 1-0. And really, George, I'd probably say now that was kind of our turning point. Because if you think back to that game, um, we had Moyes out banners um, and we were pretty awful. We did play two up front. We were pretty awful. We had Moyes at the end of the game, um, not acknowledging the fans, but then giving a little fist bump to Karen Brady. So, I mean, what would you say, George? Do you think that's the turning point in our season? Oh, 100%. I mean, the performance was not pretty at all. I mean, my dad was calling for two up top all season. Me, for different reasons, no. I think if you go with two in the midfield, you get overrun, which I think for large parts of that game we did. But we got the result, which is all that matters, and it's kind of been a catalyst for the rest of our season. It has, hasn't it? And I, um, it's really interesting because um, it, it, it highlighted to me one of those players that does come in for a great deal of stick. Thomas Suchek, who, for me... Um, had a good game in that game and um, and again just you know does the dark arts very well George um, you know the stuff you don't really necessarily see not the not the glitz and glamoury stuff the, the the other bits and and you know the defensive headers and so on and and he was good in that game and I think I don't know I just feel like maybe the um, it was that type of performance where we just had to dig in grind out the result and we did and it kind of kick-started us a little bit because from that we played Arsenal uh, and we drew two all. Could have been a different story. Um, and then the, the the cream of that, the, the crop really, of that little period of time was going away to Bournemouth and winning 4-0, which was an unbelievable result, wasn't it? I mean, it was unbelievable. That bad Bournemouth game, I remember just looking at them, just thinking, where have you been all season? Because mm. we were all over them. Yes, they had the, a bit of the ball and they were getting the balls into the box so they're big front men. But we dealt with it so well. Suchek's, I mean, I've been one of his biggest critics this season, but the last probably six weeks, he's been so much more improved. The basics, he's doing well. Like you said, the dark arts are there. And, I mean, the goal against AZ, we'll, we'll get on to that in a minute, but the goal against AZ away typified it. He won the first header that set up the goal. So he's been brilliant the last six weeks. Excellent, mate. And it's, I'm glad that you say that because one of the things I've always liked about your, um, your your analysis of football is that you are fair and honest. And, you know, I've got friends who um, I travel with who are still very much like, oh, Suchek's rubbish. She's got to go. Suchek's rubbish. And I think half of it's sort of trying to be bantery. But I also there's there's a real, there's just a negativity surrounding Suchek. And I think it's because people look at him and just, you know, he is leggy. He's not quick. Um, <laughs> he does manage to mark himself out of the game at times. He is this generation's Fellaini. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. This is it. He, he's not. He's not. An, he's not pretty, is he? He's not. He's not. He's not um, an attractive midfielder. But like I say, he is effective. And I tell you what, mate. When you're in the trenches, there, there's no one else I think I'd rather have than uh, than him. Because as we've seen, he puts his head in place. I mean, Declan there. Rice. Well, I mean, we'll come on to that man, um, you know, uh, but yeah, I mean, I know what you're saying. I just, yeah, I've been very impressed. I think, you know, uh, a lesser man could have crumbled given all this criticism and the stick. Um, and, you know, I think we've got to give credit to Moyes as well, because both of us were heavily Moyes out and, you know, uh, possibly still Moyes out. However, um, you know, he, he's he's kept his dignity. He has um, carried on trucking. And where other teams are, you know, have changed their managers not once but twice and are staring down relegation, we're, we're comfortable now, mate, aren't we? So um, maybe, maybe we give 
it's time to give a bit of credit to the owners. I mean, I'll give credit to Moyes. I will give credit to Moyes. I still think it's come towards the end. I think at the end of the season, it's the right time to move on, regardless of the final um, against Fiorentina. Um, it's a lot better than it was the last time we spoke. I mean, I was very, very, very vocal in my criticism of Moyes, both on here and elsewhere uh, on my own YouTube channel. But he's he's turned it around a bit. He's got them playing the way we were in the first season and a half, two seasons under his leadership. And fair play to him because there's a lot of managers that would have bottled it, crumbled and probably resigned or got sacked. Do you know what I mean? But he's stuck in there and he's turned it around. Yes, he has. And that's all you can ask him to do, really. We, we can't ask him to be um, a charismatic, exciting, um, you know, young manager, because it's impossible. But, you know, he, he can only do what he can do. And he has done it. You know, he's done it well. And, and we've got back to to where we kind of were in a way with Bowen firing, um, Antonio looking good, Ben, you know, all the criticism we've given him about Ben Rama and how he treats Ben Rama. Hey, maybe... you, you have, you have. Well, okay. I love Ben Rama. He's the man. I love Ben Rama. No, what I mean is the criticism of, of Moise's treatment of him, mate, is what I meant. You oh, know? Fez. Yeah, I was going to say Ben Rama is the man. He's always been the man. Uh, I mean, this is a, a conversation for another show when we haven't got so much to talk about, but I, I'm still not, I'm still not overly convinced. Oh. Although I did say that last time and went, then he pulled out the best performance ever, didn't he? I can't remember what game he, it was. He's <laughs> unbelievable, man. Put him What's in the starting, tent. Then? Because Moyes likes a player that will get back and defend. And if you look, I think it was the, there was a game, one or two games ago, I can't remember who it was against, but he was doubling up, he was getting back and he was counter-attacking really well. Doing more of that, and I think he'll stay next season. I really think he's going to be crucial to us because with Rice leaving, him and Paquette are in the midfield. Yes, please. Yes, please. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he, he has, you know, for all criticisms, seems to get the best out of him. Maybe it's Brentford, that game you're thinking of, um, where everyone struggled a little bit, didn't they? Um, I didn't I watch that game. I was away. Yeah, yeah. So it was, it was, it was another one anyway. I think it was the first leg. Okay, I yeah, think. yeah. I'm yeah. not entirely sure. Yeah, well, we, we've had, it's been a roller coaster, like I say. So the Bournemouth game is a real kickstart because Bournemouth have kind of got themselves out of trouble and we're looking on form and, and we managed to go down there and, and, and batter them, really, George, for want of a better term. Then we had the Crystal Palace game, which I went to. And it was then we had Liverpool. Then it was Palace after that. Oh, so it was, yeah, Liverpool. Then we had, yeah, we had a series of dodgy results, um, or dodgy decisions. Decisions, sorry, decisions. Yeah, yeah, and I mean... <sighs> It's been discussed a lot, hasn't it? I mean, what are your thoughts? Are you, your thoughts, uh, this is um, just inefficiency or is it corruption? What, in terms of VAR? Yeah. Oh, it's big team buyers, 100%. It's big team buyers. There is a reason Liverpool get called Liverpool. Yeah, yeah, I hear you say like, that. It's yeah. bullshit. The, it, pen it's all, yeah. the penalty against... Liverpool was a clear penalty to us. I don't care what anyone says. Hit his arm three times. Three times. Not once. Three times. The Palace one, he was already going down when he got touched. And then the Brentford one, what the hell was that, man? Well, what's he going to do? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Bullshit. It, 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 the, the, the Brentford one was a total joke. Like, I mean, they're all jokes, really. I mean, you know, you could argue, actually, if you really look at it in the Liverpool game, he handballs it not twice, but three times. You know, it, it, it's just, it, it, it beggars belief. And part of me kind of thinks that, um, you know, th there is a bit of a conspiracy, for want of a better word, you know, to get the teams back up the table. Because let's face it, all season, Liverpool have been languishing mid-table, ninth, tenth, nowhere to be seen. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, a couple of decisions, you know, go their way. And then they're back in sort of fifth and, and not a million miles off top four. And, you know, the sponsors are beginning to look a bit happier, you know, because because the big clubs are back at the top. And and you've got to wonder, George, haven't you? Because, you know, they're, they're, I mean, we don't follow Fulham, but, but I remember seeing um, a decision they got at their place, Liverpool, against Fulham, penalty. Absolutely wasn't a penalty. So you think these decisions add up, add up, add up, and you've got suddenly three, six, nine points. Do you know what I mean? And, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, it's got to be sorted out, hasn't it? Because it's, it's beginning to ruin it for people like us, I'd say. I mean, it's beginning to ruin it, not just for the people at home, but more for the, the fans in the stadium. So yeah. me and you, we go to pretty much every home game, and some, I go to some away games, you go to more than I do away. But we go to these stadiums, you celebrate with your mates, like, 
And then two minutes later, oh shit, it's not a goal because it's handballed four years before he went in the back of the net. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Bollocks. It, it's, it is bollocks. And I think the epitome of those bizarre and dodgy decisions came on the 7th of May where uh, a very kind friend of mine, you, gave me a spare ticket to uh, the West Ham Man United game. And I'm absolutely overjoyed that I went because... What a brilliant performance that was. Great game, but once again, marred by a totally bizarre and unexplainable decision. Uh, again, it's ridiculous, but what's the common denominator, mate? Who are we playing? A yeah, big team. Yeah. It's bullshit. Yeah. Um, I think if someone someone said it earlier in the season on Twitter and it was like, we'd have like eight more points if it wasn't VAR. On one hand, you're like, yeah, well, if my legs went, I could walk, but I can't. It doesn't exist, so it is what it is. But on the other hand, it makes it does make you think. Seven points, that ain't one or two. That's a big amount of points. Yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. And and it can be, it can be the, the difference between relegation and survival, which can be the difference between people losing their jobs. It can be the difference between, you know, without getting too dramatic about it, but but it, it, it affects people's lives. It can it can have effects on relationships and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, these are important things, mate. And and uh, I totally agree. But the Lindelof decision um for me. If I wasn't already thinking this is a bit dodgy, all this stuff, top six bias, then that that was that was the thing that's going to get it over the line because it, it, there is no there is no explanation to me as to why that isn't a penalty because he's moved his hand deliberately towards the ball and the line O's perfectly in line with it. Uh, that says nothing, and then it goes to VAR, <laughs> and it's all just hurried on. And I remember, you know, we were sitting together, obviously, and I remember saying to you at the time, that's a penalty, mate, that's a penalty, and it was down the other end. But uh, you know when you just, you know when you I've, know, I've got you? it in my vlog. I've literally oh, got yeah. it in my vlog, and you're literally sat there screaming, like, penalty, penalty, penalty. And yeah. I was like, my eyes aren't very good. I'm, I can't see long distances at all. So I was like, I'll take your word for it, but I'm not passing judgment i don't know haven't no. seen it back it ain't even close it's, it's total bollocks but anyway um we luckily i mean you know despite the you know var gods trying to stitch us up we, we came away with i mean some would say performance of the season against man united what were your highlights mate definite atmosphere of the season mm. that was buzzing in there wasn't it Mm. We see me and you sat together, mate. It was unreal. 100%. I think you left right at the end, and I stayed for a while, just like clapping the players off. And but the atmosphere outside the stadium was unbelievable. It wasn't just one win, because it was a seven o'clock game, wasn't it? It was bloody late. Yeah. And, and, and yeah, you mean you'd think, oh, it's going to be like half full because it's seven o'clock on a Sunday. But no, it was it was full. It was a banging atmosphere, and when we scored. It was an awful goal because the keeper was at a howler, yeah. but it was limbs in there, wasn't it? It was limbs. It was unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, the, the, again, an, a conversation for another podcast, but I'm leaving early every single game because, I mean, I had to, I had to go round... Um, Part-timer. <laughs> mate, I know, but it's just... Do you know what it is, Jill? Those stop and go signs and, and everything really ruin it for me, you know, and then and, and trying to get through all that bollocks and... Yeah, it's it's just it's just murder getting back to the chains and stuff. There's still a lot of work that needs to be done with regards to the ground. Um, I don't know we're jumping about a bit, but but we you know we found out yesterday that we're not going to be having the fan zone. So for people who aren't um, able to travel to Prague or aren't able to get a ticket, there was initially talk of a fan zone at the club, but now um, that's not going to happen because we rent the ground because it's too expensive apparently to get the police and all that sort of stuff. And you just think. Is that right? Is that fair? It's our first first final in since what seventy six first European final, um, and once again we 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 disappoint fans. Any thoughts on that? Should we be surprised? We don't own the ground. We've got no assets as it is, but that's a different podcast entirely. But we don't own the ground, so therefore we can't be making demands like this in such short notice. Well, would it have been nice? Hundred percent. It'd have been unreal. West Ham be all together. You probably, you probably fill the stadium out. Let's not lie about it. They could have put it on the two big screens in the stadium. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, Done yeah. that. Yeah. They'd have made a mint off that. But now we don't own the stadiums. So we can't really have any complaints. No, no. 
It's um, it, it's again, you know, like you say, it's, it's, let's not focus on the negativity today because obviously there's a lot to be pleased with as a West Ham fan. But yeah, I mean, these are things that we could probably talk about in the summer, I guess, when um, we haven't got any football ourselves to talk about because there's a lot to sort out of that club. Um, and 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 those, you know, those are testament to that. So on a lighter note, though, yeah, you mentioned about the final in Prague. <laughs> yeah, I'll be out there. I can't wait. I've got a ticket. I we'll can't come to wait. this. We'll come to this, Georgie Porge. We'll come to this. Let's get through this I'm Premier well League excited. games. I mean, it, it is exciting. With regards to the Premier League games, we've still got to catch up on. If it wasn't certain already, which it basically was, it was absolutely hammered home our Premier League status for another season. Um, last Sunday um, against Leeds where once again, George, we went 1-0 down, as we tend to always do. But an inspiring performance by Pakatar from Declan Rice, um, who celebrated right in front of me, brought a tear to me eye, I must say. Um, you know, we, we, we battered them in the second half, didn't we? And could have scored six or seven in Declan's own words. I mean, what did you make of that game? Lucas Paquetta, or however you say his name, absolute baller, mm. mustard. When he come in, I was like, cool, oh, jury's out because he's a Brazilian. They don't tend to do all the tricks and flair that much here. It takes a while to get used to it. But once he's got used to it the last probably month or so, six weeks, he's been unbelievable. And he's one of the catalysts for us doing so well the last re- in recent games. Totally agree. Can't 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 argue with any of that. And it's um it's sometimes like when you go to the games, um you, the little touches that don't make match the day and the the yeah the little passes and so on, getting himself out of trouble and stuff that really are pietesque. I would say in, in some. Um, Hang on, then that that's a big statement. That's I, a. Uh, do you know you don't you don't agree? I think he's got a way to go mm. because piety in that season was a diamond in a workman like team. We've got a few diamonds in this team. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. I mean, I just feel like he's he's got the potential to have the um the similar sort of impact that, that players like Payet and even um, Tevez, you know, potentially had. Because let's face it, we were in a relegation battle and um and obviously it's not the same sort of um same situation as it was from the Great Escape, but um, you know Piquetta's form has come at the right time, and it and it really has has saved us in a lot of ways. But you know he's, it, 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 I think for me as well, George, it takes um, a little bit of the concern away from the Declan Rice situation, which I think you know. Can we not? I'm not ready for this. I re- I really <laughs> am not ready for that man leaving. Uh, I mean, we are safe. Um, we are in a, a, a final, um, but we need to be honest with ourselves, George. You know, he is leaving. I mean... It doesn't exist till it happens, all right? It doesn't exist. I think, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I love your optimism, but um, the word the word from Deck Town is that, um, yeah, he's looking for bigger and better things. And to be fair, you watch City win the title and their celebrations and how together they are. And and he is good enough to be at that level. So um, I, I, I don't begrudge him. You know, I hope he lifts his trophy for us. Oh, I don't begrudge him at all. I wish him all the best. I really do. I think he's, the, he's probably top three player that I've seen in my lifetime at West Ham. Mm. Yeah, and he epitomises our values uh, and understands the club and he understands the fan base. And, um, uh, yeah, it will be absolutely, um, you know, awful when he goes. But, you know, it's, it's a new era. It's a new era, so we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. On to Ajet Alkmaar, mate, as they say in Dutchland. Um, over two legs, funny old game, on and off the pitch. Um, what were your main takeaways from from the performances? On the pitch or off the pitch? Either or. So off the pitch, how are you away for targeting West Ham players for going into the crowd and like kick um, defending their families because the age of lot were kicking off? But we'll get to that in a second. On the pitch, perfect, perfect, perfect. Everything about it. Yes, you went one nil down. Yes, it was a howler from Ariola, personally. Uh, I think you should be saving that. But David Moyes got his tactics spot on. He really did. He nullified them. He knew that they sat deep, like we do, 
and it suited us because he's like, yeah, go on, and we'll just counter-attack you. Especially in that second leg, we knew we had the lead going there and we knew, okay, they're going to have to come out of us to get a goal, wait for an opportunity and then take it. And that's exactly what we did. We were superb. Can't deny, yeah, can't argue with any of that. I mean, of the second leg, you know, I watched it in a pub in Amsterdam, and it was, um, it was, it was a boring game to say the least, wasn't it? But um, I never felt uh, worried necessarily. I wasn't concerned that we were going to uh, mess it up. I always felt like we were kind of in control. So I guess from that perspective, that it was good. And you know, obviously the finale. And uh, we, sort, we sort of seem to have developed this kind of, um, you know, like a big club mentality that we're going to go to the corner um, and sort of waste time and stuff, which I find I'm all for it. I'm all for it. Yeah, it's good game management. I totally agree. But when Pablo just thought, bugger that, <laughs> drove at the goal and, and Finney, and so one of the things, you know, I think we'd all say, if we were looking at next season and what needs to improve, finishing needs to improve across the board. However, that finish was as outstanding, you know, and, and it's, it's unsavable. Uh, and, and scenes were quite incredible, weren't they? I mean, you were out there, so you can tell it more than I can. I was watching it in a bar at home. And um, I would literally, so me and my brother were together. He's gone home after the game. Um, and then I'm just sat there in the bar still. And I'm not afraid to admit, I sat there crying. I sat there crying. <laughs> George has had an emotional period of time, haven't you, George? Because yes. obviously your um your second team, shall we say, uh, Luton are in the final of uh, the playoffs. championship playoffs. Yeah. So I'm um, an emotional man at the minute. Uh, you are a whisker away from Premier League immortality. So we should be going to that on Saturday, might we, George? Four forty five kickoff. So you're gonna have to twiddle your balls for a lot of the day, George. No, you know we, I mean? we get drinking, get drinking. But yeah, we'll yeah, go get... on to West Ham, on to West Ham. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's for another podcast but no it's an exciting time and yeah I mean Pablo couldn't have happened to a nicer bloke could it and again I don't know if you knew this but after the game where Shane Thomas went to interview him and he started crying again <laughs> and Shane was like why are you crying again Pablo and he goes oh I just love the club and people you know I just want to make people I love happy. him man yeah he's and he's great because you know he couldn't he couldn't celebrate because he was doing a drugs test he, had, he got a drugs test he couldn't celebrate with all the players after so it's like watching a family member play for West Ham <laughs> Like when yeah. he came in, my dad was quite critical of him because he's on the ball. He wasn't too good. I've never seen a player work so hard off the ball. I love him. He's just a nice guy, isn't he? And 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 yeah, he's he's very continental, isn't he? Because I think any time he's got space, um, you know, he's he's outstanding. Like I think, and that's that's what happened, you know, for that for that shot and that goal. And if he played in like the Spanish league, I think he he'd probably get more plaudits, more time, more goals, etc. Um, but you know, he loves the club. He's here, and like you say, he works his socks off to be part of that squad. And um, and you've got to respect that. Um, yeah, it's, it, it's unbelievable um, times because we now go to Prague, George. And we're very excited to say you and I both secured our tickets. I've got mine today. Did so you get one, did you? Go on. Yeah, yeah. Category three. It was all that's left, George. Category three and four. So, um, oh, well. so they're, they're selling like hotcakes. But yeah, we're there. We're there. <sighs> I'm excited. Um, flying in on the Tuesday, coming out on the Thursday. I've yes. never been to Prague. Yeah, same so as me. Same as me. Months. It's and and like like you know, I'm not necessarily. Uh, doesn't you know pump my my nads to sort of you know lots of people love going out there going oh West Ham are taking over they're taking over the city you know but that sort of stuff doesn't excite me but it will be good to have you know a lot of the West Ham family out there in a time that we never we never thought we'd have we never thought we'd have final really in our lifetime did we so it's been 40 41 years and, and 42 years so it's um yeah unbelievable stuff and um what are your predictions mate I mean, go on, just just quickly, mate. So you yeah. said, but we weren't expecting that. A lot of my mates who support bigger teams. They're they're quite blasé about finals and whatever, and they were giving me a bit of stick for crying and whatever. I said, you boys don't get it. That those of you that support lower teams, like one of my mates, is a Fulham fan and a QPR fan and whatever, so they get it. If you support Man United, Liverpool, Chelsea, Arsenal, you're used to winning trophies. You've seen it all before. I have seen nothing in my life. I mean, I'm guessing neither of you. No, in no. terms of serious trophies and it's just like it's different for us it's the first time it it's just a great feeling isn't it it is really a is a great feeling, feeling. It's, it's a great feeling and i was always a bit negative about this competition i wasn't you know? And named it the Dog and Duck Cup and all that. However, um, I've been put in my place a little bit because someone that I travel with who's older than me said that we've always had three 
European tournaments for most of most of time. You know, we've always had that at, at, at the European at the Cup Winners' Cup and, and something else. So it, it's not it's not a new thing. It's it, it's always been that way, and so not to maybe disparage it. So you know, you can only beat what's put in front of you. I think Fiorentina is going to be a very very hard game, George, and I am a bit nervous. Oh, 100 percent. I mean, Nicolas so Gon- Nicolas Gonzalez is one of their standout players. Yeah. Oh my like Jovic as well, haven't they? But he's not yeah. been in a great form. But um, but yeah, I think they're going to be half decent. They're in the final of the Italian Cup, I believe. Um, as well, so um, so they've obviously and they're not the eleventh, I think, in the league actually. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's going to be two fairly even teams, I'd say. You'll be pleased to know we're going to be playing in our third kit. Oh, <laughs> is, that, is, that, is that the orange and white one? That is the orange and white one, buddy. For fuck's so, sake! Um, so yeah, but we've done well in that kit, mate. We've done well. It so looks you... horrible. It's like a Lego kit. I might buy one. Oh. <laughs> Well, bear in mind, you've already got the Tesco kit, so... Yeah, love the Tesco kit. Love, nah, love the man. blue one from last year. I, I mean, yeah, who knows what's going to happen. I'm going to go out there with... Um, we're going to have a great time, obviously, but um, no expectations on the result um, and just enjoy the occasion. And fingers fingers crossed... See, I, know, I, I disagree with that Yeah. about the result. If you want to be attracting the best players to come to the club, and if we are going to, like, Declan Rice is going to leave, you need to replace him. Paulinho has just finished ninth for Fulham. Mm. If we ain't got European football, he ain't going to want to come. Well, that's true. Yeah, yeah, they are. They are saying that, aren't they? I mean, I, I think. Yeah, I, I hear you. I hear you. But like, I just don't think they're mugs, are they, Fiorentina? Oh no, um, they're not. But neither are we. Like, I actually think over a thirty-eight game season, David Moyes football doesn't suit a team like West Ham. In Europe, it does. It really mm. does because it set you up not to get beat. Yeah, you're not wrong. And there's some big name players there who are, who are going to want to uh, press. And we all know that Declan Rice is going to want to lift that trophy more than anyone else. And he will give 120% if it's, you know, if giving more than every game that he already gives is possible, you know. So, um, I mean, so you, look at Ma- you look at Mourinho last year when he won it with Roma. He's he's won everything there is to win. He's won his Real Madrid, Chelsea, all the big teams. He was sat there in tears. Yeah. So yeah. everyone's saying it's a farmer's cup and whatever. No, it's not. It's a European trophy. Come on, boys. It's a European trophy. It's interesting as well because obviously Roma are in the final of the um, Europa now this this year. So it goes to show what can happen. Um, uh, they've had a great great run in that. Uh, interesting as well that three Italian teams in the uh, in all the finals as well because we often think it's a crappy league, don't we? Really, but um, but yeah, they've represent- it's one it's one of the best leagues in the world. It really is. I think there's four champions in the last four years. Four different champions in the last four years. It's yeah. a great it's a great league. True. Um, so it's exciting times, man. It's been, it's been, you know, it's been interesting on and off the pitch. Um, on the pitch, it's been, been good. I think off the pitch, it's, it's been interesting because I, I went to this, I went to Alkma, I went to this corporate event out there. Andy Carroll was there and, and a few other faces, shall we say. But only at West Ham can you have a corporate event and um, all of the, basically the ICF and the faces and all those people were all there, all getting on it. <laughs> and it was just like, I just think to myself, does any other club have this? Do they have, you know, events like this where um, where basically our, our corporate is essentially all the nutters? Um, but, you know, you've got to love it, I guess. You've got to get behind it. Yeah, but what you got to realise, mate, everyone out there is real West Ham. Real West Ham. They, they've got a real genuine love for the club and they're not there for the, oh, we're going to Holland or... They're there because yeah. they love West Ham. You're in a European semi-final out there. And it, it's to all the people that have been there from day one. They've been there for the last 40, 50 years. So fair mm. play to them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's time to uh, to really enjoy ourselves. I, I don't I didn't want to get into anything negative on this um, podcast. However, I do it has been raised today on the Hammers United forum that um maybe the club could have done more to offset costs so like maybe extended the season ticket deadline um for for fans do you have any thoughts on that george being sort of a student you know and and and, uh, feeling the pinch i dare say do you think that they could have done more i think the timings is horrendous i really Mm. do because you knew that there was a decent chance especially after the first leg that we get through to the final so then you knew that there'd be, Jesus Christ, how many West Ham fans would be out there. It's probably looking at around 20,000, isn't it, realistically. It's, most of them will be without tickets, but there'll be absolutely tons of them. We're enjoying this for what it is. We lose that final. We ain't got Europe next season. 
So this yeah. could be our, this could be our only final. It's the first one in my lifetime, for Christ's sake. I'm nearly 24. You know what I mean? So this genuinely is a once in a lifetime thing. So fans are going to be like, yeah, let's go and do it, even if you ain't got a ticket. So therefore, money's going to be stretched, and with season ticket prices going up a little bit as well, it just it's all been a bit of a shambles. Yeah, it has been a bit of a shambles. Um, and I do, yeah, I, I think it's been an awful lot of money going out. Yeah, just that you come back from Amsterdam, then buy a season ticket, then start buying, your, you know, your Prague stuff. And it, it's, it's just a bit, yeah, it's a bit insensitive. And, and it is one of the issues, isn't it, that, that we face. But um, I suppose it's down to our own success, really. And, um, you know, we've got to bear in mind that our owners and the administrators at the, at the club aren't used to this level of success as well. So everyone's on the same kind of learning curve so it's exciting times George I dare say we probably won't um, talk West Ham again until after the final so um, I'm going to put you on the spot mate and say what is your prediction don't do this <laughs> um, no, <sighs> right my heart says West Ham are going to win 3-0 with Declan Rice grabbing one on his last game for us and then Lanzini off the bench getting one as well for his last game. Nice, nice. But my head thinking it's going to be a lot closer than now. I'm still back in the boys. Good, good. My baby penalty. I'm going to go, nah, 1 0 West Ham. I'm going to go Pablo 4 now to school. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, yeah. I'm not, yeah. What about you? Really it's hard. It's hard. I don't know. Hey, uh, hey, you put me on the spot. Come on, son. You know what? I can see us doing it in penalties, George. I hate to say it, but no, nah, don't it. don't do this. Don't do this. I, know, I don't want it to happen. The problem is as well. You've got the issue that Ariola in that. Um, I don't know if you remember that penalty shootout against Blackburn. He was pretty. He was rubbish. awful. He was yeah. awful. So would you sub Fabianski? In for, I mean, you can't start doing stuff like that, can you? I don't know. I would. Um, Obviously, yeah. I've done, I've done a football coaching degree, so I've, I'm all about the psychology of players and whatever. If you look at Louis Van Gaal at the 2014 World Cup, he did the same thing. Subbed on, I think it was Tim Krull, and he saved two or three of the penalties, and they ended up winning. Anything to get that win, I don't care what it is, just bring it so, home. Yeah, no, no, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. I think... Yeah, I'm hoping. I'm hoping that it, that we'll, we'll 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 cruise. We'll cruise it. But I don't. You know, if we score early and we play to if we play to our potential, like man for man, we're better. So we've just got to, we've just got to, we've just got to hope for that. But obviously, for all of us, it's, it's so nervy because, like you say, the thought of not winning it and the thought of coming back to next season having no Europe, no rice. Um, it's it's it doesn't bear thinking about. But coming back next season, winning that competition, being in the Europa League and having no rice, you think, yeah, well. Oh, okay, let's let's crack on. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's you know, it's, yeah, because you've you've got to replace Rice as well. So you, you've got to entice players in without European football if you lose. See, That's I, ten times harder. I disagree with that. I mean, I don't think I, I don't think we need to replace Rice. I think we've got it already there. But I'm not. Hang on, go on then. Go on. Suchek, then. absolute legend. I'm going home. <laughs> I'm going home. Pakita is beginning to look amazing. Yeah, Flynn Downs deserves a chance. Yeah, um, you're, you're asking Flynn Downs to pretty much be a replacement for Declan Rice. No, you can you can move you can change format. Well, he won't change formation, though, will he? But this I is think, what I'm saying. Yeah. He won't change if we get a new manager. Maybe he won't change though if we keep him. So that Paulinho, I'll be all over him from Fulham. The geezer mm. is unreal, and apparently yeah. he's got a sixty million pound price tag on his head. Yes, please, all for yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, is he Brazilian? Uh, I don't know. No. Honestly, I don't know. Well, that'd be good if he was. But I mean, yeah, I, yeah, I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But I mean, it's exciting times, George. And like I say, we'll definitely, we'll definitely meet up again for one of these. I think after the final, we could even do a special in Prague. I was just thinking either a special podcast in Prague, do it for like twenty minutes, or a match day vlog. I do them for my YouTube mm. channel. Like me and you do a match day vlog in Prague. I like that. If you want to see that, guys, put it in the comments because I'll put up. A, in fact, put a poll, or I can do it on. Uh, if you can do it, if not, tweet us with it. If you want us to do it, a, a vlog in Prague would be unreal. I'm doing yeah. one anyway. So you could just do another one. I'll put it together, and then you can put it out there. Love it, love it. Right, George. As always, it's been a pleasure 
chatting uh, football with you. You and, too, brother. Um, yes, we will keep our fingers crossed, uh, keep everything crossed for a West Ham win, and I will speak to you soon. Yeah, mate, will do. All the best, buddy. Take care.